Hello everyone, Michael back with another video. In this video, I'm going to show you how to update and add rows into SharePoint from Excel using Power Automate. If you enjoy Power Automate, Power Apps, Power BI, and SharePoint videos, feel free to subscribe because we put out more videos in those areas. And now for my intro. Okay, so in this video, we're going to be using my Excel data and I have a SharePoint list with some of this Excel data. And I have some new columns. Some of the columns were updated since last time. So let's say I get like a weekly export from some system. And I want this Excel to update my SharePoint list and add any new items that may be included with it. So let's get to it. <laughs> All of my employees have a worker ID associated with them. So you wanna make sure you have some type of unique ID to identify which, which row in this Excel is actually pointing to which row in my SharePoint list. Um, if you don't have like a, a unique ID associated with it, you can try, in my case, you might be able to get away with using first and last name, concatenate it together. But sometimes if someone has the same name, you might that might not work, so just be aware. Also, SharePoint does have an ID column, which you might be able to utilize for your IDs. Uh, I do it pretty often with some of my data. Okay, so let's go ahead and navigate over to Power Automate. This is, so in my case, I'm just going to do an instant cloud flow. I have the files stored in my SharePoint documents, document library. So we're going to be using it from that. If you want to do like a weekly email export, you can set it up as an automated cloud flow with, let's say you get an email, you can make it a, a unique subject. So the Power Automate gets triggered every time you get a certain subject in the email. So you can also do it that way. But in my case, we're going to be doing instant cloud flow. Go ahead and call this automated, automate update lists. In my case, it's the contractor list, so we'll just do update contractor list, and this will be manually trigger a flow. So on the start, every time I click this, it will run files in the documents folder. Let me just make sure this is in a table. It's in table two. So you, you also want to make sure you know what table this is. So my Excel file is a .xlsx, and my data is in a table because it will need to be on a table and XLSX for you to use. Let's go ahead and add an action. So my action is going to be, let's just search for Excel. And we're going to be using Excel online business. And I wanna list rows present in a table. Now let me go ahead and add a new connection and you might have to do this. You might not have to, I haven't signed in in a while. So that's why it's prompting me to do it. Okay. So the location where my file is located, it is in my SharePoint site. Let's see if I can find it here. It's in the marketing. The document library is going to be documents. And then the file, let's just search for it is going to be marketing. It's actually going to be master contract list uh, xlsx and the table design and the table is going to be in my case table two that's the only table in my document um i want all of the data so if you have like a lot of data in your excel you're going to have to turn on pagination to set a a whole number that's higher than the amount of rows you have in your table. So I only have like 35 rows, so it's not a crazy big deal, but if it's greater than a hundred, it's going to stop at a hundred. So if you turn on pagination here and you set the threshold higher than a hundred, it should capture all the data. So in my case, I'll just do like 200. That's way more than what I need. So let's go ahead and add an action. So now I want to go ahead and get all my items from the SharePoint list. So that will be the contractor list. Go ahead and grab that. Get items, marketing, contractor list. And again, with this pagination thing, if you have like more than a hundred items, it's only going to return first a hundred items if you don't turn this on. So 
I'm going to set this to 200. Just be aware that can occur. And I don't need any advanced parameters on it. Okay, so we're grabbing all the items from my Excel. We're grabbing all the items from my SharePoint. So I want to loop through each item of the Excel. So let's go ahead and do an apply to each. And select an output from the previous step. This is going to be list rows present in a table. So each row in this Excel, it's going to go through each one one by one. So let me go ahead and add an action here. So for this one, I want to do filter array. All right, so let's go ahead and set up this filter array. Pretty much what I want to do is I want to see if my worker ID is contained in the SharePoint list already. If it is, we're going to match that up and then we're going to update that row. If it doesn't return anything, then I know the item's not in the SharePoint list and I have to create a new item. So let's go ahead and do that. So the array I want to filter from is going to be the get items. And in my case, the get items is going to be the worker ID. So the worker ID from the SharePoint list, that's going to be item worker ID. If I zoom in and hover over that. So I want to see if that is equal to my apply to each. So the Excel worker ID is in the apply to each. So if I go to choose a value, list rows present in a table and choose worker ID. It shows item. I don't know if you guys can see that. It's, sh it's showing item worker ID. I ran into this earlier today. That's not the item I want. That's actually linking to the, the SharePoint. So I think it might be like a bug or something. So let's go ahead and custom write this with dynamic content. So I'm going to click on the current item for apply to each. So it's going to look at which item I'm on in my Excel. Go ahead and do a question mark. And then I'm just going to put in hard brackets, single quotes, whatever I name that column. So it's going to be whatever your unique ID is. In my case, it is worker ID. And just be careful about if you have like a space after the column name, because sometimes it won't map correctly. If there's like a space here, it's not going to find that right column. So. Just be sure of that. I'm going to click on add here. So it's actually going to look for the correct um, item in my, whatever item I'm on in my Excel document. Okay, so now we want to do a condition. So in this condition, we want to see if our filter array actually returned an item. If it didn't, then the item's not in it. So we're going to do choose a value here. And we're going to write something out. We're going to use the length function. So I want to see how many items are in my filter array. So it's going to be body filter array. And that's going to give us how many items were returned. If there was a match, it'd be one. If you have like a, if you don't have like a unique ID, it's going to be more than one, but it might be zero. So let's go ahead and do that. It's going to be length body filter array. So if that's equal to zero, um, I actually want to do is greater than zero because if it's greater than zero, I know I have to update it and that's going to be the true side. Go ahead and do add an action. So we're going to do update item. So we're going to do marketing. My list name is contractor list, I believe. Yeah. And now it's asking for the ID. So we want to get the ID from our filter array because that is what was returned. So a filter array doesn't know if it returns only one or more than one. So let's actually go ahead and put this in apply to each. And that's going to be for the filter array. So since I have a unique ID in my list, there's only going to be one record for each unique ID. So the filter array is never going to be more than um, one but it's going to be easier to code this out if we put it in apply to each. So for the ID, we're going to do item ID. 
And that's going to be, if there was a match, it's going to grab this ID right here and match it up. Okay, let's go ahead and do the show all. And let's just add the things from the applied each because that is what the Excel is looking at. So first name. And I like, for some reason, I like to custom write these. So I'm going to do items apply to each question mark. And that is looking at my Excel. So for the first name, I'm just going to copy what's in my column name. And paste it there. So it's going to map that correctly. The last name. Just do item. Last name. If you do it this way, if you don't like click on anything or like use the dynamic content, I, I learned a lot quicker and a lot faster what actually like the syntax was and how like Power Automate matches things together. And it's been working out pretty well. So I kind of recommend it. So it's going to be. Oh, I actually made a mistake on the last one. So we got to do the apply to each. And that will be last name. Favorite sport. Status. Worker ID. Worker ID. Okay, so we got five items. We got five items on the left hand side. So that works if it's false, and then the item wasn't in our list. So maybe a new person joined the organization. Let's go ahead and create a new item for them. It's gonna be marketing, a contractor list, show all. And then it's gonna be the same things I had in my update item. I'm just gonna copy this and then paste it and do this for each item. Okay, so I copied everything over. It all looks good. Yep, the item looks good. The filter array, I think, works. Go ahead and save this and test it out. And how I'm going to test this out is we're going to add the modified field and the created field. So if it is an existing record and it gets updated, then the modified field is going to change and the created field is going to stay March 28th. If it's a completely new record, the created will be today, which is 1114. And that's how we're going to know if it works or not. So let's go ahead and test it. Uh, I'm just going to save this file and close out of it just so nothing strange happens. Go ahead and click on test. Okay, so we got all the rows present in the table, getting the items right now. You can see we have 27 items. Okay, so the first item was in it. I know the ones at the end weren't in it, so just make sure. So it actually created the item. Uh, the filter array didn't return anything because there is no match. If I go to the first item, it was an update item, so the filter array should have returned something. And here it is right here. Let's just check the SharePoint list. Okay, so these were all modified, updated a minute ago. Uh, we have some inactives in there, so that's that was different. That's good to go. And then we have the newly created items down here at the bottom. So these items weren't in our list, so we can see the created was about a minute ago. So everything seems to work. So that is how you update existing rows and create new rows from an Excel sheet in a SharePoint list from Power Automate. I hope you guys liked the video. I went into a lot of detail about how things worked in this video. Um, I hope you guys understood it. If not, leave me a comment telling me I didn't describe it well and I will do better. But hopefully you guys learned something. If you liked the video, please like it. Uh, any questions, leave them down in the comments down below. And I will catch you guys in the next video.